Hello everyone, welcome to part 7 of this series. In this episode we are going to create a drawing and sheeting animation with Umotion Pro. Warning, this will be a long video as I will be explaining how Umotion Pro works as well just to make sure everyone can follow along. Before we start I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. I will make these animations I made today available to my second tier Patreon supporters as well. So for this video I thought it would be useful to do this start to finish so like mentioned before we'll be using Umotion Pro in order to do this now the great thing about Umotion Pro is that you can use inverse kinematics which is something Kim Creator uses by default as well which is pretty nice and you can do all of this inside of Unity and Honestly, this is one of the best assets out there just in general for no matter what you're working on. I'm pretty sure this can be useful for anyone. Now, animating often sounds scary. It sounds difficult and people immediately align it with tools like Blender, etc. And Umotion Pro shows you that it's not. So it's not scary. It's not difficult. It's time consuming and it's definitely take some skill and practice to do it really well but getting the basics done is accessible for everyone and I don't think anyone out there wouldn't be able to manage to do some basic things with this so really cool so we'll be definitely be using this and I'm going to do it start to finish so I want to include the actual setup because there are some important things to keep in mind when installing this asset so let's head back to our scene and in here I'll be creating a new scene which is something I always do for animating. So let's call it animating. I'm going to open it up. Let's create a simple plane here. Let's do it six by six. It's going to be big enough. There we go. Now I'll be copying over my existing character because I'll be using that as a reference. So we'll save this scene. And we're going to drag our player in here because I do want to test out everything we're doing here. So let me make sure the camera motor is a part of that as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. They're all here. Now let make sh let's make sure that player is actually on the ground. Perfect. There we go. Now it's a bit difficult to see anything without generating some light, so let's make sure we do that. Otherwise, it's going to be really dark. There we go. So we have our basic plane and now let's make sure we actually import Game Creator, um, Umotion Pro, sorry about that. So we've just imported Umotion Pro into our project. Now let's actually go ahead and set this up. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that bright white material. So let me actually grab this terrain. I'm just going to drag it here. So it's a bit too bright. That's really white. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Game Creator, Characters, and we're going to create a character, which is in the zero position. It's all good. And we are going to actually drag out the actual character and remove the parent. All we're interested in for this is the actual model. Now, the reason I'm not using the default model that we're using in our series, the Sinti model, is because Sinti models have less bones, which is why we needed to adjust the position of the sword, for example. 
So creating a set of animations or just even the one with using a not entirely correct humanoid character as a base is just not the best idea. So using the default game creator character is actually a great idea because it is a completely fully rigged humanoid character. So it has all of the bones. Now we'll be able to use that animation with our Sinti model but it just makes more sense to actually create your animations with a good foundation rather than using Sinti as a base. Now you can always go ahead and adjust the animation while using Sinti as a base if it doesn't work properly but I would always suggest using a proper humanoid model as a base for animating. Now we're going to add everything in our scene so we're going to go to clip editor and we're going to drag the clip editor in our scene and the next step is to add the pose editor to our other window there we go so let's create a new project we're going to select humanoid because it is a humanoid character and that is what game creator uses as well so let's just save this there we go and the first thing we'll do is we're going to rename our clip so let's call this draw there we go and here we have the options to select what type of format we want to use so a .anim file or .fbx .anim files in general are easier with game creator and unity .fbx are universal files so it's up to you what you want to select i'm just going to go with our anim files let's select our folder to go to so i'm going to select this one select folder and let's close now that we have our project all set up i'm going to drag in our character here and this will start the configuration so I'm going to click create configuration and basically it is all set up now however one of the better things about this program is being able to use inverse kinematics inverse kinematics are basically an easier solution to manipulate the body instead of having to manipulate every little bone in the body with inverse kinematics you basically select a component that automatically will adjust the rest of the body so dragging the foot would allow to automatically drag the rest of the bones as well it's easier to show this so we're going to set this up so let's go to config mode and select ik setup wizard now by default this will be properly set if it's not if this arrow is not pointing the right direction you can adjust this but for me it's all good so i'm going to press ok and it will automatically assign the correct values. If it doesn't, you'd need to change that. But if you are using the default character from Game Creator, just like me, it will work. So let's just hit Create. Here in the right side, we are going to select IK because that's what we want to configure. And we have our pose. So that's it really now as you can see everything that's still white and the blue boxes will be boxes we can manipulate and everything that is well this color i don't know what color there really is is something that will automatically be adjusted while we drag the other bones now what we're going to do is i'm going to go to our project folder and i'm going to look for idle and we have loads of idols but this is the melee idol so we're going to click the cross here and we're in the right place and we're going to hit ctrl d to duplicate and that creates our animation and this is the idol pose we are going to use as well and i'll show in a bit what this all means now we're going to look up idol yet again and we're going to look for the other idol 
that we need. And this is the default idle position. So we're going to hit cross again and locomotion walk idle. I'm going to hit control D yet again. And this will select our other idle. So let's just keep these positions in mind. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to import clips. So we're going to look this up in the correct folder. So plugins, game creator, characters, animations, animations, groups. And there we have the first one. So let's add that import. And we're going to select FK to IK conversion. So basically, if the animation state is forward kinematics, it will become inverse kinematics. And I'll, I'll show you the advantages of that in a bit. There we go. And let's drag this up a bit and let's actually close map magic graph. We don't no longer need that. And as you can see, we have this default idle animation, the one used by game creator. So that's good. Now let's import the second one as well. And that was in the melee module. Not entirely sure where this was placed. Maybe in melee examples. Uh, there we go. Cool. It automatically renames it because it was actually using the same name. But luckily that's automatically done. So we no longer have to look at that either. And we have this one as well. So we have our two animations. Now I'm going to briefly explain what inverse kinematics is before we continue. So the advantage here is that we can pin these feet. So let's do that. Let's actually pin those feet. Let's drag this up a tiny bit. There we go. And if we pin the feet, will be able to manipulate the rest of the body and it will behave accordingly. Now I'm going to set this to auto key to generate. So it will automatically generate new positions, new keys. So let's do that again. There we go. And I'm going to turn on IK pins. So yes, yes. And what this means is if I now select the hips, for example, you will see that the feet stay in place and the rest of the body moves along accordingly. And this is actually a really, really useful tool, a really useful asset in order to manipulate the body without having to manipulate every little bone. I'm going to control Z all of that and I'm going to simply Pull this back, turn IK pinned on. Yeah, sure, yes. I'm going to select all of these keys and we're going to go to our draw animation. And at point at two seconds, we're going to paste all of those in. There we go. So we have our end state. And we're going to go to the first idle and there's so many keyframes, but we won't really need any of that. Let's just make sure we select the entire body, select this, drag him up. There we go. We select both feet again, turn on IK pin again. Yeah. All good. Need a little adjustment for this one. There we go. And we have our idle state. Now let's copy all of these over as well. Go to our draw animation again and paste these in the first one. And as you can see, this will now draw the animation in a perfect state. There we go. Now what I'm going to do next is not really related to the animation, but I just want to make sure we can actually test all of this in our existing scene. So 
As you can see right now, I can click this character and nothing will happen. That's because Umotion will automatically lock the object based on our character. In order to get rid of that, you will see Umotion locked as well. All you do is press clear and we can go back to using our scene. So I'm going to go to project here. I'm going to go to scenes. Open up our scene. So let's save this. And I'm going to, so this is just to be clear, this is the scene we set up before. I'm going to copy over items and I'm going to copy over user interfaces simply because I want to test all of this in the actual scene and not have to switch back and forth, which is just a bit easier. So open up animating again and paste these in. There we go. Now one last little thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit play right now. But before I do that, let's actually make sure our item is visible. So there we go. We have our sword. Let me actually drag that in properly. And there we have it. So now let's hit play. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this sword, I'm going to hit escape and equip it. And maybe this is a bit exaggerated, but I actually want to make sure that the sword is in the exact right place. So let's grab our player here and let's drag him in. So let's drag him into a folder. There we go. And I'm going to drag him here so it will create a prefab. I'm going to escape our play mode. There we go. And I'm going to drag in our player. Now let's make sure he's in the correct 0, 0, 0 position. And there we have him. I'm going to keep the sword. So let me drag that out. Oh, not this one. There we go. Let me unpack that pref prefab first. Perfect. Let me drag that down. And we can remove our prefab. There we go. So this is just to make sure that we're actually dragging the sword in the exact right place. And as I said, maybe a bit exaggerated, but I just want to make sure we're grabbing the handle correctly. Now, when we're going back to our scene, I'm going to go to pose and just drag in our character again. And we can get started. So we'll have the entire situation correctly set up. And what we're going to do first is we're going to start by actually adjusting his feet. And we need to make sure that our right left foot remains here. So in order to do that, we are literally going to drag the entire character to that position. So let's select everything, grab our move tool, and we're going to move him. And yeah, that's it. So that's, and obviously two seconds is way too much, but that's how he gets there. So this foot remains pretty much entirely the same. I think there's a slight movement, but I'll go so fast you won't see that. And this foot needs to go up because you know, you're not literally ice skating over the floor. You do need to get there at some point. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this frame here and the frame position doesn't really matter. We can all move that all around. And we're going to actually have him move his feet up. Drag this down. Drag this up. And we are going to make that position. So he'll 
literally be dragging his feet up and I'm going to move his feet up a bit. I know, you know, he might actually not have to do that. So, you know, he might just get there faster normally, but it's part of a little realism. And at the end, I want him to really have that step moment. So we are going to slam it down and we might remove that. Yeah, I'm actually not a big fan of the, the whole slamming down. Let me just not do that. But it's, you know, it's this little, really little difference, but it looks nicer. Actually do notice the default is actually not as flat on the ground as I hoped. There we go. And you know, it's this little, little tweak of him actually making that effort to get there. Now, is he still floating? No, he's not floating. It's just the angle. Cool. So yeah, little, little tweak, little difference, but once this gets at the right speed, it will look a lot nicer. And I'm just going to drag them a bit together for now. We'll move them out of the way at some point. And here in the middle, you want to have the, you know, the middle pose is how do we transition there? And that is going to be a quite difficult one. So let's actually just go here to the beginning, about the beginning, and drag that hand in the correct position. So this will be the hand we'll be using. The other hand, we don't actually need to modify anything. It's just going to be right. And this is, I'm going to be honest, this is going to be a uncomfortable position. Pretty sure it's not really that great to have the sword on your back anyway. I mean, it looks cool, but. From a game's perspective, it isn't really easy, you know, much easier thing to do as the spine is something that doesn't move along as much and looks nice but yeah we need to get to a pretty uncomfortable position to actually get there and it, yeah it's going to be a bit weird so we'll need to get into that muscle pose where he's flexing a bit to draw that properly and rotate this a bit. And we'll get there, we'll get there. It's just a bit of a weird, <laughs> weird position. some proper flexing going on here and mind you this will definitely not be a perfect perfect animation but it will look good enough now I'm not sure if we really have to go back that far but something like this seems about right Yeah, that seems, that seems pretty decent. No, it's not perfect, but that seems pretty decent. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is because we are going to remove that sword pretty much the instant we actually start the animation, we need to drag these frames of our edit on the start. So we're going to go back here and that is a modification we need to do because the sword will pretty much disappear straight away from our back. So that's not really in, you know, that's kind of trying to match your game mechanics with the animation you're trying to use. Now, our hands could be slightly better. I'll just use this just so it doesn't glitch as much. And yeah, something like this. 
Now, keep in mind that the moment our sword disappears and we start using the melee module, he'll have this hand, uh, the sword correctly positioned in his hand. So this is a really quick state and it's, it's not really going to be that, you know, that weird as it as it does look right now it's going to be a really quick thing and yeah it will look better not even sure if this looks yeah this looks pretty decent I'm okay with this but now the problem is is that we get into this weird position so you know that's not how you move your <laughs> how you move your arm in that case so we just need to so here we have our trigger point so this is where the arm starts to act weird so around here let's actually make sure the hand is going up and you don't need to do every keyframe that's I think that's one of the important parts is we are going from point A to point B so a lot of those points in the middle will actually go along just fine you know that's where we need to get so right now already for example we are drawing the sword upwards and we just need to make sure that you know we drag it in the correct position and that I'm going to rotate this a tiny bit at this frame because I want to make sure we're not actually drawing that sword through our head so there we go and that's not good enough either because he's going to he's trying to get into this position straight away we really need to extend that draw so we really need to you know draw extend that arm a bit there we go so let's see what this looks like right now. So if we hit play, and it's going to be really slow because we just need to move those frames around. But that looks pretty decent. Pretty sure we're still going to draw that sword through our head though. So maybe draw, do it like this. There we go. And yeah, that actually looks pretty okay. Don't mind me sounding surprised. It's a bit difficult when you don't actually have animations to work with. So just, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about this one. It just seems like we're still going to go through the head. So Let's rotate this a tiny bit still. And then here, rotate it in the same sense. And this is just because we are going to try to get to the right endpoint. There we go. And yeah, that's a bit slow, so let's try to speed this up and go to one. And even one seems like too much, actually. It's should happen a lot faster so we're going to drag all of these along I don't know go with 40 seconds that's a lot better just thinking of the feed right now seems pretty fast enough and yeah we not, might need to move some of these along a bit so this is a really really small step so I'm fine with that And this is the difficult part, I'm not going to lie, actually getting your timing right, but yeah, I keep playing this, but I'm pretty content with this. It's definitely not perfect and let's see what it looks like when we actually lose our 
<laughs> lose our end frames, but cool. I'm okay with this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to name this clip something else. So let's call this draw. It's not going to be a looped clip because we're only playing this once. So that's all fine. And we're going to export our current clip. And we have our drawing animation. Now, in order to actually test this out, that's why I'm, you know, have a player in this scene as well. Let me actually remove those variants. We don't need those. Where let's go to our player. Let's actually clear here so we can go back to edit mode. Let's go to our inspector and our project and on equip. Okay. I'm going to look up the idle and and needs to be a sword idle somewhere. I'm not really sure. Let's look up state, maybe that's better. There we go, character idle state sword motion. Now, this is the clip we need to enter, so I'm going to lock this and we're going to go into our project and we are going to look up the animation we just made. So animating, no, not there. Creating a game series, animations and draw. So we're going to drag that in. Now let's actually inspect that animation. So as you can see, we are going to bake these these two in the pose and have a 0 0.1 offset most likely that's needed don't bake this one in as root motion is not supported we just need to bake these two so i'm going to give this a try i'm not really sure if the results will be as we want but so let's pick up our sword i'm going to equip it straight away and oh my god, let's hope this looks good. Yeah. Yes and no. I'm actually quite pleased with the way it looks. Don't get me wrong. It actually does look quite decent. But we are removing the sword way too fast. As it seems we are blending the first couple of frames straight away. So it actually looks quite good. So we are really drawing the sword, but the sword should be disappearing a bit later and it's disappearing a bit too fast for my taste. But the animation actually looks pretty good. I'm actually quite pleased with that. Um, color me a bit surprised at the same time. But yeah, this looks pretty good. So I'm I'm happy with these results. This looks pretty nice. And obviously we need to you know sheet it back as well and for that I'm honestly just going to yeah that looks pretty good I'm, I'm happy with this so we just need to sheet it back and we're just going to reverse that animation so we're I'm going to do a really simple reverse here so let's go back to our editor let's drag in that character there we go and let's duplicate so we have a duplicate the current clip we're going to call this sheath pretty sure that's how you pronounce it and we're going to turn this around so yeah this is going to be a bit weird but 40 seconds and 40 seconds and this should be in this spot. Oh my God, I'm going to mess this up. This should be in this spot. This is the middle, so we shouldn't be moving that. And this is 12, should be 12 seconds. Would actually help if I Yeah, and there we go. Now, one small difference here is that I do want the step to be slightly more obvious as we 
you know the step should be the other way around so I am going to change the foot animation so let me change the rotation I'm going to remove that I do like the fact that he's really stepping down here so we're going to keep that but we're good yeah we're going to turn this around so here in this one we are going to drag this up I'm going to drag this down a bit there we go and in this one I, I want I know this is a bit weird but I want him to really go up a tiny bit so we are re it's a bit it's not great and I'm not going to spend too much time on this but it seems like he's going to be moving a bit more so let's keep his foot in the same position there we go going to move this up a tiny bit and let's rotate this a bit more yeah not perfect but good enough for now so this is sheeting back so that's um, not sheeting back that's sheeting so we had drawing and sheeting so let's export this current clip as well there we go I'm going to go to the look up the exact same let's clear this I'm going to look up the exact same state that was the sword state motion I'm going to lock this go back to our animation folder and we're going to drag and sheet on exit there we go and yeah the animations are fine we might need to play around a tiny bit with um, you know the timing of removing the sword because that seems to happen a bit too fast um, despite our animation literally starting in that position but it seems like we we lose those frames and yeah there's not all that much we can do about that so let's make sure these are baked as well 0 0.1 and yeah it's kind of a shame because we are losing those so as you can see here all plays and looks pretty cool but yeah we are losing a couple of frames and unfortunately that includes actually having the impression we're actually you know using the sword at that time so we might have to look at that a bit so there we have it those are the the basics for you know sheeting so that's that's pretty cool there we go so let's hit play again and see how this plays out so let's pick up our sword go to our inventory equip so that looks good that looks good but yeah this the sword is back straight away so we're you know in this drawing animation the sword actually appears straight away so I have to check the actions and even though the animations look fine there you know the delay is causing a slight issue here so that's not really all that clean And what well, we might actually have a small, we could actually do a small fix for this. So let's actually, let me open up that draw again. Drag in that character in our pose. And let's see. So this is where we are, are really fast and I think it's the shoulder so let's actually go and select the shoulder the elbow and these ones so rotation of the elbow position of the elbow I'm going to grab I'm going to grab the entire hand as well so I'm just going to copy up grab all of those 
There we go. And I'm going to move this these two a tiny bit. Oh, that's the wrong one, so it's actually in a good spot. And I, I'm not sure what happened here. Must have wrongly selected. So hand pinning elbow elbow shoulder shoulder there we go so let me copy all of those and I'm going to copy them here and we are delaying it a bit here and I'm, I'm hoping that adding that small delay so keeping the hand in, in place a bit longer is going to allow us to not have to play around with the disappearing sword so yeah a bit of a bit of a trick but let's see if that actually works so let me export that current clip and for sheeting unfortunately that wouldn't work um, there's too much of a delay so we will have to play around with when the sword actually comes back so add a small weight there to you know properly match the states but here this is something we can mess around a bit with the animation Hopefully this is going to look right. There we go, so let's pick that up. Equip it and unsheet it. And no, unfortunately that doesn't really make much of a difference. We just lose too much of that. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to play a bit with, uh, with the delay here. So we tried, but we'll have to mess around with delaying that sword to disappear so that's the only real way to achieve this so anyway our our animations look pretty clean they look pretty smooth i'm i'm honestly quite happy with those they're they're pretty pretty decent for our first try here but yeah we'll we'll definitely need to need to play around a bit with uh, the delays so let's go ahead and do that so this is that for this scene. I'm relatively happy with our animations. They're not perfect, but I think they are good enough. So let's do that. Let's go to our scene and completely ignore everything in, else in this scene. Go here and obviously here is going to be the same because we just addressed the state. But now let's actually have a look into playing around with those delays a bit. So when we go to our player, we go to equip and we have all of our conditions. Remove from spine and draw sword. Now let's add a delay here. So wait. And let's do... This might be way too much. 0 0.5. Uh, let's give this a try. Pretty sure this is going to be too much, but we can play around with this a bit and see what matches. And if you have a different model, you have a different sword, or you have different animations, these values might be different for you. Need to address the placement of the minimap at some point as well. Something went wrong with anchoring that into place. So let's pick this up. And we are driving our horse, well, riding our horse, so that's not what we want to happen. So let's get off. Got a bit too close there to the horse, maybe. Maybe the collider's match, I'm not really sure. Anyway, let's go back to our animations, and that's better. That's not good enough. But that's. It's actually pretty decent already. So I'm not sure if there's a real time if this works real time. So let's actually try that out. Yeah, this works real time. So that's pretty cool. We can fine tune this. That's pretty nice. So let's do
and that actually looks really good so 0 0.3 seconds it is that it's not perfect but it's pretty I'd say that's pretty close actually that looks pretty good so we have our drawing I'm actually satisfied with that I'm not going to mess around with that at all so that's that's drawing is pretty clean now let's make sure we do the same for so 0 0.3 let's keep that in mind and let's do the same for sheeting and for sheeting we need to attach it later so I'm going to do the same weight here and well let's hope the magical numbers works for both I doubt it but and it actually does that actually works perfect so let's add those weights in the editor now so 0 0.3 seconds I don't know why that copied over 0 0.3 seconds and 0 0.3 seconds I'm going to hit play mode let's walk to our scene and I have to find out what happened there with the drawing because I'm pretty sure I'm not close to the horse and it still goes to my horse that's interesting I have to that's a nice bug to fix in our next video as well so there we go we're going to pick up our sword and yeah that looks that looks pretty clean it's not absolutely perfect don't get me wrong but it is pretty pretty decent so that looks pretty good bit of a long video but I hope you enjoy this and I hope you find it useful and if you do please hit like and subscribe and I will see you next time